Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We begin today with some timely reminders about pest management in winter crops. Joining us now is our extension entomologist Tom Royer. And mm -hmm. Tom, what are some of the first things that producers need to keep an eye out for this time of year? I've been getting phone calls about a pest called winter grain mite, which is appropriate for this time of the year. And it seems to occur specifically in uh, no-till fields. I've been getting calls over the last two or three years uh, in no-till fields that are planted wheat, uh, continuous wheat year after year. It's, it's something fairly new. Um, I've been here 17 years and up until the last three or four years, I hadn't really gotten many calls on it. So in terms of scouting for these mites, what do producers need to do? There's some, some time considerations. There is some time considerations. Winter grain mites hate the sunlight. That's, you might think of them as a vampire. But so on a cloudy day, they will be out feeding on the leaves or another, bit, another good time to scout for them is in the evening after the sun starts going down. Then they will crawl out and you'll be easily be able to see them. Uh, we don't really have a good threshold for them, but uh, if your wheat is starting to look, take on a grayish cast, and uh, you see, you know, hundreds of mites per square foot, that's probably an indication you need to do something to treat for them because they can they can injure the wheat at that point in time. And what do they look like up close? There's some some colors that we have a fondness for yes, here at Oklahoma yes, State. Absolutely, uh, you need to have a uh, magnifying glass because they're very tiny. But they have a black body with orange legs and an orange spot on their back. So the orange and black is very you know theme specific to Oklahoma State. Uh, but uh, there's something we don't necessarily want to uh, celebrate. Right, in our wheat fields. <laughs> in our wheat fields. Let's talk about aphids and what we can look for in wheat and canola there. Yes, um, from this point forward as the wheat and the canola starts coming out of dormancy uh, and starts growing, uh, it's, a, it's a prime time for aphids to become established in the springtime and, and uh, sneak up on uh, plants because they're still small and then they can kind of overwhelm it. So it's really important to get out and scout for aphids in both wheat and canola. And in terms of scouting, is there some tips there you can offer? Um, well, if, if you're scouting for green bugs, we do have some, uh, some high-tech things. But for the most part, it's getting out and just looking underneath the leaves and, and picking up uh, leaves and looking to, to find if you have aphids on the plant or getting down on the ground and, and slapping them to the ground so you can take a count. And then in terms of army cut worms, we know the, the northwest part of the state is especially mm -hmm. vulnerable, but it depends on the year, right? Yes, it depends on the year. Uh, the moths fly down from uh, the Rocky Mountains every fall and lay eggs, and so just depending on what that fall flight um, uh, produces. But uh, uh, army cut worms are here from October all the way through March, and they love the cold weather. They will feed on uh, canola and wheat, and uh, I've, I've, heard, I've heard farmers actually say it looked like my wheat or my canola just turned right back and dove back into the ground because they take out stands. So it's really important to regularly look and make sure your stand is not uh, deteriorating or you're losing stand in those fields. And is the best way to do that is just to, to check often or check often. look at those I, yeah, stands? You need to look every week or every two weeks just to make sure you're not getting caught off guard with these things because as those caterpillars get big they start getting really uh, hungry and they can really take out a lot of stand as they get bigger. And in terms of treatment options it's going to be localized depending on what kind of pest problems we're going to see? With, with each of these pests they have a certain uh, set of insecticides that are available to control them and it's really important to uh, look locally to find out what's what's your best price for the products and which products are best. So I recommend that you talk to your county, you know, county educator or check one of our fact sheets out for uh, specific control information. Okay, Tom Royer, our extension entomologist, great advice. Thank you very much. And for a link to those fact sheets that Tom mentioned, just go to sunup.okstate.edu.